Hi, in this video we'll see how to go from unboxing a 13 inches MacBook Air M2, then doing the basic setup and finally running a 7 billion and a 13 billion parameters models, actually the best open source 13B model right now. Even so, this should work as well in other M1 and M2 MacBooks. Here I will move fast through the initial configurations, just set everything as you want and sign in with your Apple ID. Ok, so let's go with the prerequisites. The first thing that I do is to open Safari to download Chrome. I prefer Google Chrome, I'm more used to it, but this is optional, so just install the browser that you want or use Safari. You will find all the instructions of this video in the Medium blog that I left in the description. Also, I noticed that the screen wasn't seen so good from the camera, so I started recording the MacBook screen from the minute 2. The next step will be opening the terminal, you can find it in the search bar. Once that we have opened the terminal, we have to write git and press enter, and then accept the next windows that will appear. Now we have to download and install bro, you can do it with the curl command with its github link, or you can also do it from the bro.sh website, you can download it from there and then install it in your macbook. Now we need to add bro into the system path with the following commands and then install wget, python 3.10, cmake and git. From this point I started to record my macbook screen and also record my image but I didn't put my image because I wasn't talking so it makes no sense. Now you can create a folder for your projects about coding, I already created it but that's the way to do it. Then we can see the web that I was following to run this project, but I had to adapt it to my computer because some commands didn't work for me, so you can find this in the blog. And this is the Llama CPP project that we'll be using to run the LLMs in our computer. Now in the terminal in the folder that we want to install this project, we'll copy this command and paste it in the terminal. Then uh, this project, the Llama CPP project, will be cloned in this folder of here. You will see that in the blog I also added the option to build it with CMake, but make itself should work for most of the cases. Now we will install git lfs, the large file storage system of git. This is optional, but uh, it's a good way to download the entire repository with the models. Otherwise you can download part of it, the smaller files, and then download the larger ones manually from the repository in Hugging Face. The next step will be doing cd into the models folder and then into hugging phase we'll go to our repository for the model that we'll be using. Uh, in this case I use Vicuna 7b that is a version of Yama but better trained so it has better results you will see. I started downloading the model weights from the hugging phase repository and it was taking so long this time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it takes so long or, or it gets stuck. So I had to interrupt it and use this other method with this command git lfs skip smash equals to one. It will only download the smaller files. Then you have to go to the folder of the project you will see now, or uh, the folder of the model, the, um, delete the placeholder that it has placed for the large files. And then you can download manually from hugging face the larger files. You will see now how to do it. So here I had to remove the previously download um, repository and I do it now with git lfs skip smash. Now it takes less time to download because it's only downloading the smaller files. Then we have to go to the hugging face repository and download the large files manually. It's better if you first de delete the, um, the previously placed holder that he has download. But uh, in this case, I first downloaded them, then I had to delete the previous ones and rename them. You will see, but um, this time I made it like this. I'm speeding some parts of the video where models are downloaded or some parts are built, because otherwise the video would take so long.
Now we'll have to go to the model folder and delete the placeholders for the large files. You will see that they take around 130 bytes and the real the real ones take like 10 gigabytes in this case or 3 gigabytes and so. So you have to delete the previous placeholders and rename the newer ones then with the original names. At the end, we'll need to check that everything looks the same as it was in the Hugging Face repository, so all files are named the same and weighed the same, so everything looks good. Then we can go back and follow with the next steps. So first of all, go to the Llama CPP folder and make sure that you have Python 3.10 installed. Then we'll create a virtual environment with those commands and we'll activate it. Then we can install the Python libraries that the project requires with pip3 install uh, dash r requirements txt. Now we can reconstruct the model using this Python command from the Llama CPP project. It will convert the model in the ZGML format uh, that is in the float 16 precision in this case. And now is when it comes to the interesting part of the Llama CPP project. So we'll use this quantize file uh, to convert the, the original model, the float 16 precision one, to 4-bit precision. So we'll quantize it in 4-bit and it will take only 4 gigabytes of it instead of uh, 13 to, to run it. That's uh, the secret source of, of this project and what allows to run this in, in laptops. So now we can do CD into the model folder. So let's see what it created and then cd into the vicuna folder and we will see all the, um, the models that it created are those two of here the f16 one that was the original the large one and we will be deleting it and the q4 that we want to keep and now we will go back to the llama cpp folder the main one and we are able to run the test to see if everything runs well with this command of here that i'm copying and pasting now, if everything was correct, it will start showing some parameters and writing some text, some generated text from the model. You will see that the temperature of the course starts to increase up to 108 degrees, so it gets to the limit. And it uses the cores, the CPU cores, not the GPU ones. Now I was correcting some problems that I had with the, with the previous command to run the interactive chat in the terminal. And now if it's good, I, I have to go back to the Llama CPP project. So we have to be in the main folder of the Llama CPP and now run this command and do will start the interactive chat in the terminal. So now you can make questions and if everything works well, it will be answering them locally from your computer. So not internet is needed here at this point. And let's see what it responds. So let's see. And here it goes, so the result is not so bad. Uh, it's hallucinating a little bit or it's a little bit strange the response, but I was so surprised that it's responding so, so fast. It's faster than ChatGPT actually, maybe double the speed or three times. We'll see then the, the results of the how many tokens per second it was producing. This is something that it prints at the end of the script, but yeah, it's surprising how fast is it. So it's incredible. The results probably won't be as good as GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 in this case because we are using a 7B model, a 7 billion parameters model, and it's quantized to 4-bit precision instead of 16 or 32-bit precision that they are normally uh, trained. So the, when we quantize a model doing this reduction of the precision, we lose also some precision, some, some accuracy. But even so, it's, it's worth, I think, because otherwise we couldn't be running this, these models into our computer. Now let's see this other response about creating a kick receipt and it looks pretty good. Uh, I haven't I haven't checked if it's if it looks good or I haven't checked to, to build this this cake but it looks it looks pretty good so far yeah. My MacBook has 24 GB of RAM but this should work also into 8 GB ones uh, with the M1 chip or the M2 chip and in MacBook Pros I assume that this will run even faster. So now after running the 7 billion parameter ones, I went to the leaderboard of Hugging Face. You can see here the open source models, uh, which one is better. And I was looking for the better one with the 13 billion parameters. And luckily it's also Llama based, so it will be compatible with the Llama CPP project. And I was checking here how it was trained. So apparently it has been trained with 300,000 instructions. So it takes a lot of computing resources to, to train it. And the results are so good as well. 
you will see that I have here the instructions to run a Vicuna 13B model and I achieved to run it but I think that it was a model trained only for code or it was quite strange because it was only printing code when I tried it. So I removed it and I decided to look for a better one and I end up with this nose Hermes 13 billion parameter that it results to be so good, you will see. Now we'll have to repeat the steps to download this model, downloading first the small files and then going to manually downloading the, the larger ones. In this case, I deleted first the placeholders for the large files, so then I could download the, the original large files directly from Hugging Face without having to rename them and to download the placeholders later. So now I could directly download the large files and it will be good with the correct name. And it's very important that you check that at the end the folder looks the same as it's in Hugging Face, so there is not errors or the, the models didn't end up in another folder. Here I had to correct again the commands to quantize the model from the Vicuna that I tried before to this no Hermes and we'll be quantizing the 13 billion parameters in float 16 to 13 billion but in 4 bit precision. But first we need to reconstruct the model in GGML format again. In this case, I think that the original model in float 16 precision was weighting 26 gigabytes and the 4-bit precision one will end up being only 8 gigabytes. So it will be able to run uh, more or less in, in also 8 gigabytes of RAM MacBooks. So here it goes the quantization of this large model. Let's see how much it takes. It usually in my computer was taking around 17 seconds or so. I think that uh, I was speeding the video, but uh, here you will see the results at the end of the script. Uh, it prints uh, how, how long it took to, to quantize the entire model. And now if we did everything correct, we have to test it again. So let's see if it's able to print some, some results from the model. Again, uh, the temperatures will rise and here with this model, it's not as fast as the, as the previous one, but it's still so fast. I think that it's faster than ChatGPT as well. This 13 billion parameter one in 4-bit precision. And now we will run the terminal chat, the, the interactive chat in the terminal. But I had to correct uh, some instructions from the prompt. So every model of those is trained to, to respond using some specific prompt. And in this case, it was this instruction, instruction uh, prompt. So uh, I managed to make it work with, with this trick of here. And now we'll see uh, if we start the interactive chat. So let's see. And here we see the question that I started the video with. Uh, say something funny and short to my YouTube viewers. And well, yeah, quite fast, but I think that the results here are better. Blah, blah, I'm your robot announcer, blah, blah, blah. So it's pretty, pretty good, I think, yeah, we're so fast. And now let's ask another receipt for today's dinner. Let's see. Um, let's see what's the result. I didn't try it, but I should, I think. So this one looks pretty good. Boneless, skinless chicken breast, and olive oil, fresh rosemary leaves, garlic, lemon juice, fresh red pepper. So yeah, I definitely should try one of these receipts. They look so good. And it's amazing that we can run this uh, source of knowledge from our computer locally without internet. And it answers so precisely only with 8 GB of, of memory. So only in 8 GB and this one in 4 GB, but it was not so good. But this one in 8 GB is able to store so much uh, human knowledge. So it's, it's amazing what we can do nowadays. Here I was also printing the CPU load because I didn't do it before and I wanted to make sure that it was only working in, in CPU. So the CPU load that you can see here, I think that it's mostly from my recording of the screen and my also I was still recording my image, uh, even I haven't used it at the end. But you can see that it's 100% running in CPU, so this is even more incredible. So we can run this in, in CPU, not in GPUs, and it runs so fast. So it's incredible the optimization that the Llama CPP project has done. 
And also this Nose Hermes 13 billion parameters model that it's from 20 days ago or so, I think that it was published. It's, it's so good. I think that they say that it was comparable to GPT 3.5 or, or almost, but we should check how much we are losing with the quantization of this model. I think that it's worth for the reduction of, of weights, but uh, we lose some accuracy, of course. Finally here, I was checking the best 3TB parameter model because I thought that maybe with around 20 GB of memory you can run it if you quantize it first to 4 bit and it also should be um, compatible with these models of the Llama CPP project. I'm not sure, I haven't tried it, but if anyone tries, uh, just tell in the comments if it works or not. For me, that was all for today. I hope that this worked for you as well and it's incredible what we can do nowadays uh, to run LLM's model so intelligent in laptops so well see you in the next video bye bye